All right, so hello and welcome back. So this is going to be part two of my reaction to this um, armor arrow versus armor two, the full medieval armor tested. Okay, the original video is in the description. Please, for the love of all that is holy, please go watch it and give them a like. You can watch it in the background, give them a watch time and all that stuff. Okay, otherwise we're going to keep going. Um, and I'm already very impressed. And if you like this specific um, video on these, you know, get enough views, I'll react to the whole thing because they had another, they have another three different series just on this, go breaking down individual details. Tell me if you guys want to, you know, react to that and stuff. Otherwise, let's get going. Okay. Our intrepid Frenchman, he's coming alongside your lines. He's walking up towards you. Better shots, better angles coming in from the side. Okay. Take it away. Nice. Nice having to us. Yeah. I mean, it shows why they wear them. Now, that is interesting to me, okay? I thought it would probably go through the Aventail. Yeah, I'm surprised because it's really just thick cloth and chain mail instead of just chain mail. Chain mail, I mean, is, as we've seen with the shoulder pieces, you get hit there, you're basically gone. But there's usually a gambeson or an arming jacket under that, which is a little, basically a thick little jacket. Um, an arming jacket is a thick little jacket that you attach all of the, ar the armor pieces to and the chain mail. Um, is what you wear over that. Um, or in this case, you could have a game of underneath it and that functions the same way. But that Aventail is very interesting because it is a thick piece of cloth and it is shaped and it is, you know, around your neck. And I wonder if that has done like a, a jab in. you're not going to feel very good. Um, let's put it that way. I wonder if it's jabbed in and you like can feel it like it's going to take the wind out of you and then it bounces back or if it's like done a little puncture and bounce back. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Good. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> it's a really weird behavior of the arrow there, too. The sound is fabulous. Right, again, please, Joe. The, the sound is fabulous because it's going, it's going faster than, let's put it that way. The arrowhead that is bouncing off of that armor is going faster than what he's actually shooting it out of. Well, there's a puff of something there. Oh, yeah, nice. that was a good one. Again, Aventail did its thing. That Damn, that Aventail's really strong. That's surprising to me. That might have actually mm -hmm. protected his shoulder a little bit. Yeah, well, the, the gaps in the, in the shoulders, they're not as available to the archer because of the angle. Yeah, and that's true on both sides. But actually, if you look around his elbow, the side of his breastplate to elbow now, right. there is a gap opening up there. Yeah, yeah. So, Joe, can you get right in here? <laughs> Just there, right in the crook of the elbow on his right elbow, because yep. there's an there's an opening there now. Yep. Oh. Nice. That was nice. That's a good one on the side of the breastplate, yeah. but even the sides are still doing their job. Yeah. So far, this guy is upset, but he's still walking. Right. I'm surprised that actually. Well, I mean that angle. I wouldn't want to be getting hit on the side with a fucking breastplate like that. Let's put it that way. Oh. Nicely fire. done. Well, that's worthy of going to have a look at, isn't it? You coming up, Joe? Yeah, I'll come up. <laughs> that's well, cool. Yeah. Just pushing straight through the articulation. But that's hitting right on the overlap of yeah. the plates, too. And that's what, 50 mil, two inches? A bit more, actually, going in. So, so you're into bone there, I think. Yeah, that's shattered his upper arm. So you've gone through the steel, the mail, the padding, and you're that far in. Yeah, you're done. Um, on the battlefield, it doesn't mean you're done. You have one arm working and your other arm is broken, bleeding, and you have a massive amount of force that went into that side of the arm. It bent the, it bent the steel plates. I'm just pleased. I got one stuck in him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good point. That is the first time yeah. that the armor has properly failed. On this one, you've seen the armor doing its job. The plate stopped the arrows a couple of times. The heavy mail on the Aventail turned two arrows completely with no ill effects to the man inside. So you're seeing that dynamic. The armor is working hard and, mm. and turning a lot of the shots, but not all of them. Yeah. It turned that one. Lovely yeah. dent there. Yeah. That's a that's amazing. It is. 
So they, the, the French are trying to attack the English center. Henry V is there in his gilded armor and the royal arms of England, and he's got big French lilies on his helmet, and he's saying, I'm the rightful king of France, come and get me. When talking about gilded armor, he means basically just think of little gold inlays on your armor. It's like whatever you do, like gold um, things on your jacket, or really, like, think of like gold and trim is basically on a car, is basically I could do that. Is the best thing I can give you for what gilding is. So he's wearing that with the, you know, obviously the French crown, um, aggravating, basically taunting the French to come kill him. So all the French are going for the center, which means they're just steaming past the archers on the flanks. And you're now going to have the ability to shoot them straight in the side. Do you want that? Mm. Oh, <laughs> I definitely want that. Um, again, I'd be aiming for here and especially here where it's nice and flat. So hopefully I should be able to get an arrow to grip and really yeah. deliver a punch. So let's turn him, go again. Okay. The knights now, they're walking past your lines. They're ignoring you. Take it away. And my thing is this armor, so we've already seen multiple times that this armor has, you know, you've been hit and, and not, you've either been incapacitated out of the fight or you've been wounded, or you're, or in the, or you just haven't been affected at all. So it's not always the breastplate that's going to get hit. The, your body is pretty big. Um, so this is already confirming in my mind that yeah, the English longbow is as bad, is as deadly as most. I'll say as all historians put it back in the day, but you can see how it starts to really start. Um, the, not just the lucky shot, it's just shooting everywhere that's basically not the main breastplate um, and the helmet. You can punch through this thing. I want to say reliable, pretty reliably if you hit the arms, the legs, the the lower body, it's pretty bad um, and when you're going to get hit from them. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a very bad sound. Can you imagine though, you're just walking past. <laughs> Really this, this is just coming unpleasant, at you. Unpleasant, very unpleasant. Yeah. Liking that, Joe. More of Thank that, you. please. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that was, yeah. It doesn't have to penetrate to remember hurt you, okay? Or even kill you. Kill you probably is really a stretch. But hurt you, I mean, if your helmet does that against the side of your... Again, this is why helmets have a lot of cushioning in modern helmets, right? It's not the... The bullet won't get through, but if it deforms inside the helmet and then the metal is pushed into the side of your skull, you're dead, right? I don't think it's doing that because obviously it's not denting um, inside the helmet. But that doesn't mean... It's not going to stop the helmet from shifting and like slapping the side of your head to an uncomfortable degree. Lovely. I'm going to run in and see if I can get a decibel reading. Ninety decibels. So it's not actually as loud as I thought. Mm. But the thing is, the decibel meter itself is inside under the armor coif. The lining of the helmet's quite thick. Yeah, but still, mm -hmm. I thought it would be louder actually. Nine. Ninety decibels is still really loud. I mean, <laughs> that's like someone screaming at you, like, like ten feet away from you. It's still loud. A shot though, Jay. Thanks. Ow. Ooh, yeah, his back now, yep. no back plate, completely exposed. So you've got him right Kidneys. there. Kidneys. Right. He's dead. He doesn't have a back plate on. He's dead. That's what I wanted to see. Mm. So you've got two layers overlapping on the upper arm. There's two millimeters of steel there. Yeah, turned it. Glanced off of something. I think this <laughs> glanced off the spear. Hey, use the spear as an improvised shield. Now, now, that now you're thinking. Spear. Nice. Shot. Nice shot. Brilliant. Should we go have a look? Okay. Let's go check it out. Why don't you take a remember to look at something? People are like, oh yeah, why don't they just pick up the arrows and shoot them back? Every single arrow that has hit this man that has not killed him and gone through the armor has broken into a thousand pieces. 
So you're not shooting those arrows back. Maybe if you pull them out of your dead friend, <laughs> maybe you'll be able to shoot them back. I mean, this is fantastic, Toby, because, you know, it's been quite a day and we have basically hit everything that we wanted to hit. The side of the visor, the side of the helmet. I really wanted to see what was going to happen when you hit this double layer, mm. two one mil thick layers, and it's pierced both of them, but not done a terrible injury, I wouldn't have thought, but this one certainly is bad. That I mean, that is deep in if, Probably if it was flesh right through in honesty. Yeah, I mean that could go and hit your spine. That could go and kill you, hit your organs. I, I, you're, you're dead. If not dead, you're slowly gonna bleed out and die. Mm. This one actually has pierced a hole, mm -hmm. but the tiniest of holes, and that one's done nothing in that sense, just a dent. Again, it will leave it open to the question: Had that been a case hardened one or a steel one, would the result be different? I actually suspect not. Pretty amazing results, though. We've got to go review those because we've got. I think it's almost every shot on mm -hmm. slow mo. We're going to go and have a look at that, see what we can learn from that. Mm -hmm. So let's go set that up, and we're going to leave the boys to come and uh, look at this and talk over it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Wow. Okay. Done some damage. There is some armor. damage, but I thought. It would be more, actually. Did you? I thought so. Um, the Aventel, I thought that would be enough because I've seen before yeah. how they behave. But the side of the visor, I thought it would at least go through like the head. This, this is really interesting because it's almost a dead-on shot. It is. What amazes me is, is the fact that the raw iron heads have done any damage at all to it. Because in the previous test, we thought they were just kind of bouncing off and yes, not yes. really bothering. Yeah. That's a really painful shot. It is. That's done a lot of damage. Yes, it this has. This arm's out of action already. Yes. And anywhere that isn't plate has gone in, hasn't it? Yes, in apart from the instance. Aventail, but yeah. that's what it's designed for. So, I mean... And that is a good point. The, so, again, he, he's better on armor. So the Aventail, you know, is thick. <laughs> uh, it's meant to stop these things, right? Um, we're also not mentioning the French used to wear... I don't remember but the term. There was the first time in the first video. I believe they tested it. Um, and then maybe in the Astro Core after, after video. But basically, the French would wear this basically a very elaborate... Uh, fabric on the outside of the armor and it, it was very effective at catching arrows um so and not piercing them so i mean there's that but yeah you can see if you have the plate on the sides of your arm you have a decent chance of probably not dying from the arrow impact but it is still going to be painful and you're still going to be wounded if you don't have the plate on your arm it is certainly going through and taking you out and it may very well kill you so again the plate it may not be like, well, it's not stopping it. I'm like, it's not stopping it, but it is severely reducing your injuries most of the time. And for example, in here, it did penetrate two separate layers of steel, which is already hard by itself. Right. Uh, but it did jam the articulation. So you will be able to fight, but you'll start having problems. His whole right arm is almost immobilized. And of course, we've seen one arc. And that's something that he, he's very good at picking out. Because I'm, I'm not, obviously, I'm not, I don't have any plate armor. But yeah, if you jam this armor, you don't have to, again, it doesn't have to penetrate you. If you jam the arm and you can't like bend it or move with it and you have a two-handed weapon, for he has a spear, right? For example, he can't move his right arm, which is pretty bad because most people are right-handed in this time because if you're left-handed, you're, you know, a heretic um, most of the time. Little jest there. But yeah, again, if it's jammed, you can't fight very well. It doesn't have to penetrate you. It doesn't have to hurt you, but I mean, your arm's jammed, you can't do much. arm is almost immobilized. And of course, we've seen one archer doing all of this damage. Yes, over a distance of time as well. Yeah. In 20 minutes of walking and shooting, you will start finding the gaps. It's quite a terrifying thought, really, isn't it? So, who wins the bet, Arrowsmith or Armourer? Well, half the time, the Armourer wins. And half the time, the Arrowsmith wins. He's dead. He's alive. <laughs> Do you go and look at the footage? Absolutely, let's go for it. Brilliant. Let's have a look at this footage then, guys. Let's see what we got. Oh. So that's straight into the left shoulder. Case hardening, would that have gone deeper? Maybe. It's Maybe. It would have bitten more. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah. The right angles of the visor are pretty useful. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now he's lean. Now just remember, the visor is shaped like this to deflect arrows. And it is very good, as we've clearly seen in this video. The problem with wearing a visor like this, you can't see dick <laughs> putting it very bluntly you can't see anything um because it is so far forward away from your eyes right it offers great protection but you really can't see what's going on um it's, it's, you know used for like advancing towards the arrow fire and maybe a lance because you can see the horses right 
Um, there are many accounts of people grabbing this thing, throwing it off, grabbing it, throwing it back again. Um, and we don't know how they were tied down. That's another thing. We don't know if they're actually tied down on the Aventail. My guess is probably because um, you don't want this thing just sliding up and down on your face. That's stupid. Um, we don't, they have, some of them have quick release pins where you can pull the pins out and then the vast, oh, what is it, uh, visor will come out so you can fight. Because again, you still have the whole, this whole thing right here with all this leather is still a massive and very good helmet. It's just your face is going to be exposed, but you can breathe and see. So again, the visor is doing its job and protecting you against arrows, but you really can't see what you're doing. Leaning down oh. to, to protect his face and he gets shot through the shoulder. It's just bad <laughs> yeah. luck. But it's easy to focus on the ones that stick him through the shoulder or wherever. But let's remember, like there, again and again, his life is being saved more times than it's being taken. The piercings are really impressive, but they, they are outnumbered by the successes of the armor. There is a real black and white. If it hits the plate or if it hits the mail, mm -hmm. the results are quite different. Yeah. Oh, right in the belly. That's a bounce. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bounce off mail. That is still the most surprising to me because, again, I didn't know a lot about Aventails, but it, just straight bouncing off the Aventail, I didn't expect. Yeah. Ooh, that's that's not bad. Oh. Oh, that's where those two plates came together, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So back in the top arm again. Yeah, just spread the, sh the shoulder limbs. Oh, oh that's a great right shot. The, right that's in the ear. Shot. Square on. <laughs> square on the side of the visor. Still. Moving the visor as much force is being hit by. Still bounced off. It moves yeah. his moves his head. And he, he lifted he's... the whole visor the vi well. Lifted the visor, yeah. yeah. That's the other <laughs> one in the side of the head. <laughs> yeah. Then straight back out. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so upper, upper arm? arm? Yeah, yeah, that's on the arm, upper cannon, yes. Just... That, that punched through, but it bounced mm. out again. And it punched through both layers. Mm -hmm. And that was the wow. glass. So you might have had like a nick or like a puncture wound, but it wasn't that Deep, I'm assuming, because you know, the arrow bounced out. So bounce off the one. elbow. Yes, yeah. and that actually just kicked him in the back as well as it yeah. went through. Yeah, That's still. Going. And I think yes. that that is our lot, lads. So, wow. Who wants to see what? Because we've got one more round of shooting. Case hardening. We've got yes. to. We've got yeah. to. Definitely case hardening. Yeah. We want to see it bite more into the steel of, yeah. the, of the armor. And Toby? I want to see some justification for the French fear of being shot through the eyes. So far, that visor has done a great job of protecting the guy's face, but they were f afraid of the visor being pierced, so I want to see more shots at the face to kind of understand that. Okay. And he brings up a good point, because if it's written on the historical records that they're afraid of being shot in the face, a rational fear versus an irrational fear. Rationally, we've seen that the, the fucking, they're not going through the helmet, and they're not going through the visor here, okay? Um, but case hardened arrow, it might just go through. Again, as he said, they were very afraid that they would go through the visor and go through the isolates. So maybe there's something there. Um, maybe it can go through, uh, or I guess we can see. Well, I'm with you on both of those suggestions. So uh, let's do that. All right. So we're shooting case-hardened heads. Now, of course, we have no evidence they did it. So not, it's not really a historical test in a way, but... Yeah, but if they coulda, they woulda, and they could. Go for it, Jack. And the reason they're they're saying this, um, they could have, they would have, and we don't have any evidence for it, is because if you leave an arrowhead in the ground for a couple hundred years, any very trace amount of case hardening um, goes away. They talked about this in the last video. Uh, the Australian, same Aerosmith. Um, if you leave it, there is very little layer of case hardening on basically on the outside of it. You can uh, go more in depth with that. We can watch that. But just so you know, it's not... We don't have a historical reference, but it's not like they didn't know how to do it, and it's not like they couldn't do it. They did know how to do it, and they could do it. So whether they did or not is up for debate, right? But just know that any arrows we pull out of the ground don't have case hardening on them because they've the carbon is gone for being in the ground for so long. Okay. Okay. We're going to have that head left over, but... Lovely shot. I forgot to say that there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Arrowhead's absolutely shattered in. That actually looked like it bit pretty well on the armor. Oh, 
again. Mm, nice Avantail shot. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. But it sounded like it hit plate, actually. So yeah. I'm wondering if it went through the Avantail and touched on the plate. That was sort of a dull thunk. That's interesting, right? Because they're mentioning it might have actually gone through the Avantail, so you might actually be dead and then hit like another plate um, somewhere and bounced out. That was Aventail on yeah. this play, huh? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, nice. But it stopped it again. It did. We put him on a fairly loose stand. He's got wheels underneath. The head's on armature wire, so are the arms. You know, there's movement allowed in mm -hmm. it, which, like a body. It makes it weirdly lifelike, too, yeah. though. You know when he got smacked in the head with yeah. the arrow on the slow-mo yeah. shot? You feel it. You do. And the reason they have it so... This is one of the tests that, again, they came from the first one. The reason it's all mobile um, is because a human body is mo mobile and malleable, right? If you get hit, you knock back, right? If You, you don't just immediately stop, like, a blow to you, okay? So, for example, if you're shooting a, a just a breastplate and it's, like, on a hard surface, like a wall... Right, all the force has to go into the target, and it can't, you know, fall back or graduate uh, backwards and give a little. No, it hits a wall, so all that force goes into that little point. Right, when you give a body like this example on wheels, so it can move around and be wiggly and wobbly, it actually improves armor um, testing and armor efficiency. Oh, ah, right, that yes. is interesting. That went through. It didn't hit, it didn't hurt him, but there's a hole. Yeah, this breastplate, they're going to be ones that aren't as good as that. You know, it was a nicely made plate. And there are ones that are better. And there are ones that are better. But that's the first time all day mm. it's got a hole in it. Yeah. And it's been hit a lot. Last one. And yeah, this makes a good point. That case hardening it looks like it does something to the breastplate. And remember, it's just a medium range breastplate. Again, there's higher ones and there are lower ones, so. Love. And they also mentioned that every other arrow we have fired today has not done anything to the breastplate, really. Last one. Oh, again. Aiming for the same hole there. Yeah. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so let's go and have a look, see what we got. That is just brilliant. Well done, guys. I think, Joe, you've got to come up for this one. Wow. So that's the one that that really went through. And actually, look at the thickness of the metal there. I mean, it'd be interesting to measure it, but that's pretty substantial. If yeah. you go and have a peer at the hole. Yeah. Another nice bite there. Yeah. And then there's this ah. one that's gone through the skull. Almost, yeah, huh? so that again, I mean. It, oh, it went through the helmet. Oh my God, I didn't expect that. It's not pierced in the sense of gone through and hurt the guy inside, but it's made a hole. And that one, look at that one. Yeah. There's, there's a piece of the tip there. in there. Oh yeah. See, that, For me. This yeah. is super significant ah. because that is a normally from today that would have just been a glancing shot yes. it's still glanced but look at that bite you're right the glancing shot that it would have otherwise been mm -hmm. is now a biting shot but there is a vast difference here yeah. yep you don't need scientific equipment to see that these are making a difference this is something that's easily perceptible with your regular senses yep. medieval people have no problem understanding the effect that that's having this is a catch. And that, that's a good point. When people, people aren't dumb, I mean, we can see that it is having an effect. Now, the question is, does it have, again, it is having a significant effect. The question is, is it much more effective um, to do this based, versus the amount of money and the man hours required to do such a thing? On a small scale, like if you have a personal archer and these were your arrows that you had to buy, yeah, you'd probably get them case hardened, right? It makes sense. You want to do more damage to people and, and knock them out or kill them. Versus a massive army, again, how expensive is it? That's my question. Case hardened one, which must have... How expensive and how much time consuming it is. Struck, struck somewhere. Feel the point on that. It's still really sharp. And There's no blunting at all. Well, I think Will's question, our question of, does case hardening really improve the penetration? I think that's absolutely been answered. And it's been answered in slightly clever ways as well because it improves the bite, not just the straight presentation, the ability of the arrow to actually catch a bit of metal and push on through. If only we had evidence that they did it. So I think we've got to keep on hunting that. But what we want to... It's going to be pretty hard to do that because 
you have to find an arrow from that time period. Maybe somebody in Eastern Europe can help them out. Maybe there's an arrow somewhere in Eastern Europe that we haven't found. It's in, an, it's in an old barn somewhere, and it has a manual next to it in uh, the language that says, hey, this arrow is case hardened. Um, and maybe it still has the case hardening on it. Um, but it can be very hard to find that. But it is improving the biting. And the biting is basically if it how much of an angle it can still grip in, like, turn. So think about this. If it has a better biting angle and it's going to shoot at, like, a 70-degree angle, right, and a normal non-case hardened arrow would just bounce off a an arrow that bites more, so case hardening, the 70 degree shot, it actually turns in and bites slightly into the target. So that's what that is referring to. What I'm do now is come back and see if the Knights really should have been scared about the breaths and the sights of their helmets. So Joe, it's a small target, I'll give you that. Yeah. Right about here, please. <laughs> should we go do it? Yeah, Brilliant. let's do it. Thanks guys. So Joe, big bundle of arrows. One night asking for it. And this is still a pretty, it's still a pretty hard target to hit a helmet like that. So I, I will give him props. He hits, he hits it really anything significant. <laughs> we ask, you deliver. <laughs> oh, right in the mush. Yeah, right on the snout. Man. Lovely. Yeah. That's really going to hurt. Oh, nice. Well, it's in a good throat shot. That's stuck. Yeah. It's just stuck in there. That might not have gone through, but that's definitely at least hitting your throat. I'm like, <laughs> it is. But again, that's it's padding at that point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's no plate behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that might well have been enough to give him quite a smack on your windpipe, and that is mm. delicate. Yeah. And it doesn't take much that's, to hurt. That's here, isn't it? Yeah. It depends how much give it has the liner and how safe it's closed. Yes. We can't know. No, no, it, we can't. It doesn't look great if you're no, on the inside of it. Yeah, and if they had, a, again, they, they don't have unlimited money, but if you had a ballistics gel head in there, it would be very interesting to see if that, like, jabbed and, like, went through, because, again, we don't know, right? There's nothing underneath to tell us. It's just, you know, uh, Aventail, uh, maybe an arming cap, which is what you wear under a helmet. You don't wear just a helmet, fun fact. Um, but, yeah, it might have actually gone in the windpipe. It might have killed him, but we just don't know. So close. He would have seen that coming, wouldn't he? So close. Nice. I haven't mm. Lovely. And that's true. Again, that looks like it's through. The guy inside is fine, but the Aventel has been pierced. Yeah, but he now yeah. knows. Yes, then it goes through. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because we've. Yeah, so now it, it goes through the Aventel with a case hardened. And that doesn't look like, so it looks like it's just above you, like above like your neck area. So it looks like it wouldn't have actually hit anything important. It might have, but it might not have. I assume that that's pretty safe up to now. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> that's the same hole. Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was gonna. Very nice. Joe, really. That was right between the eyes. <laughs> that is extraordinary Ugh. shooting, Joe. <laughs> yeah, but again, that, that visor is still doing its job. I mean. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that 
that's a good one to finish on. And that is the end. No, oh, yeah, that's a good one to end it with. It didn't go through the breast, but <laughs> yeah. This season, goodness. Thank you. Incredible. Thanks. That was incredible. Thank you. That was incredible. Well, let's go have a look at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Oh, carnage. That's, that's the first thing I want to talk about. Look at that hole there. Yeah. yeah. With an unhardened head, that's done some damage, isn't it? Yeah. This is the thinnest part of the visor, probably is like 1.2, 1.3, absolutely. Not only is it a big hole into the helmet, it has steel behind it. Yeah. Had that been 15 millimeters over? That's in the face, isn't it? There's void in, there. there. Yeah, if that, if that visor was like just a little bit more forward, so like, because again, if you close the visor, it's going to be like on your chin, right? So if it's a little forward, depends like how big your face is. So if it's a little bit more forward and that went in, that's going into your eye socket and you're dead. That is in the face. Yeah. Right yeah. into the eye socket. It is. But that one got stopped. I mean, he hasn't actually been killed by any no. of this, scary and dramatic though it is. For me, that, that, that hole alone says that they had reason to be worried, yeah. at least from the side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then we look at everything else that has occurred. And Joe's shooting, we all have to admit, was extraordinary. And I don't know how many landed on the face here, but a significant number. And not one other than that has indicated anything about wanting to go through, not remotely. No. These are more interesting, aren't they? Yeah. Because and again, they're worried about their face, right? But the rational side is like, no, it won't go through. But the irrational side is like, you don't want to get shot in the face, right? So... Uh, but the rational side, the visor is doing its job and it will protect you very well. If he was turned a little bit more towards Joe, these are going through into mm. dangerous mm -hmm. areas, aren't they? That goes right in. Yeah. And that's, we don't mm. know, but it's around his throat here. And that is a really delicate area to, you know, to get punched. That's gone all the way through the Aventail yeah. and out the other side. In so fact, that... I can see the head from the other one as well. There it is. Right. So it has pierced <laughs> yep. the Aventail. And that's the first arrow that's done that. And gone yeah, back into the lining, yeah. yeah. And not only that, it's pierced it at an angle, so it's gone through more of the material. Mm. It's gone through the same amount of mail, yeah. but it's gone through more of the padding behind it than has. a straight hit would have done. It has, oh yes. And it's still penetrated. It well, we really didn't think this Aventail would be pierced. When you have it in your hands, it seems so thick and yeah. dense and heavy. Yeah. Most shots, not. But that's armour, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mostly, it, it keeps you safe. Yeah. Not always. Right. If it is only one fault, and that's the thing is, don't get hit. If you get hit, don't get penetrated. <laughs> if you get penetrated, don't get killed. You know. The rivet, one faulty ring, then you are dead. So guys, we've got to come to some sort of a conclusion about well, what has been a fantastic day. Uh, we well, we can conclude that Joe is a fantastic shooter. <laughs> but seriously though, we have actually got to come to a decision here. So, you know, let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, what are your final thoughts on this today? I'm amazed how well the wrought iron is performing. We didn't think it would do anything near as much damage as it is today. Augusto, how do you feel about it? I am amazed on how well the thinner armor fared against the arrows, just thanks to their shapes and the tight curves. Yeah. And Joe? Firstly, I love shooting at uh, <laughs> the full armor here. And secondly, just that the arrows went through the Aventail. It, uh, holding it earlier, it was so thick and heavy. No, I agree with all of that. And, and Toby? The plate armor really did its job. The, the serious injuries occurred when we hit the weak points that we knew were weak points and that they knew were weak points and that they were rapidly dealing with in the technology of the time. But the plate armor is doing its job. Yeah. Now, I think that's evidently, evidently the case as well. There is one that could have been, could have been. But it didn't. But it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. And so that takes me to the last one, which is my one, which is case hardening. And it, it's infuriating because after looking at this, I swear they must have done it, but there is no evidence. And all you uh, curators out there, go digging through your collections. Find us some evidence. But please find us some evidence of case hardening. But really, that's it. So... I mean, it's just been a fantastic day. So thank you all for the efforts. And it has been a massive and a monumental effort to put this together. And also I'd like to say thank you to all of the crew who've worked over the last few days to make this thing happen. And indeed the craftspeople who've worked on this who aren't here today. And the backers out there who allowed us to do this. And thank you to our French knight for putting up with us. <laughs> Never complained, did he? Now this is in fact the first of several films that are coming. This is the big one, but there's lots of supplemental ones where we dive into little particular areas. Go check them out too. Thank you. 
So if you guys want me to check out those uh, supplementary videos, please let me know. I thought this video was fantastic. Please go watch this video if you want the full unedited one. Watch it in the background. As I told you, please give them a like um, so that they can keep you know doing more of this stuff. He's a very good guy, and he's and all these guys <laughs> putting this team together is no small feat. So if you guys want me to react to some of those other videos, please let me know. If you enjoyed this, this is just a passion project for me uh, watching this video because I've always wanted to see what this could do, uh, but what happened? It's been three years. So if you want me to react to more stuff, please let me know in the comments. Uh, for this, otherwise. Uh, on your screen up there should take you back to part one if you haven't seen that already. Otherwise, I'll see you people later and have a nice day.